Today, we are going to install the best integrated bidet toilet money could possibly buy. We're installing the Toto NeoRest NX2. Now this same installation process will work for the Toto NeoRest NX1 as well. And we're gonna walk through all of the steps now. My name is Daniel Johnson. I'm your bidet expert and I'm the owner of manybidets.com where over the past eight years, we've sold over 10,000 bidets. If you're interested in buying one of these particular units or any of the units that Toto or a variety of other brands carry, reach out to us. We're happy to offer special pricing and get you a great deal on your new bidet toilet or bidet seat. These bolts come with your flange, so you should already have them. Toto does not supply them. We're using a better than wax seal, but you can also use a wax ring or a silicone seal uh, depending on your preference, Toto says silicone in the manual. We're going to need a manual screwdriver, a drill with a drill bit and a screwdriver bit, a wrench, and a little bit of plumber's tape. Everything else comes with the unit. The first thing we have to do when installing the Toto NeoRest NX1 or NX2 is determine where the mounting brackets need to be installed. And to do that, we're going to use a template. This is the template that Toto provides with their unit. You would just want to get it centered. There is wording back here, back wall side. So make sure that when you're putting it on, the back wall side indicator is pointing towards the wall, not towards the main bathroom. And then line it up, you'll have a little perforated piece that you'll need to rip out, but then line it up so that the flange is basically in the middle of that, uh, that template. And once you've got it lined up as best as possible, Take a little tape to hold it in place. We're using painter's tape because it's easy to take off. And all we really need is a little something to help hold it in place. It's not something that we're going to uh, need any real strong adhesive on. So there we go. Now that we have the mounting plate in place, we can see that there are screw holes here, 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 and here. We're gonna go ahead and screw those out real quick. With those screwed out now, we can go ahead and take the template off. So now we're going to go ahead and install the flange adapter. Remember these bolts come with the flange, so that's not included. We're going to slide it over. We wanna make sure that this manual flush cable is pointing backwards. Otherwise we know we have this uh, flange adapter on backwards. Also these little bolt impressions are not used, so don't let that throw you for a loop. If you're using a silicone sealant, you wanna make sure that you're connecting that sealant to the bottom side of the flange adapter if the flange is metal. If the flange is plastic, you want to connect the sealant to the flange adapter, or to the flange itself, and then put the flange adapter over top. Once we've put the flange adapter on, we're going to go ahead and put our washers on and then tighten this down. We want it snug, but we don't need to over tighten it. And now our flange adapter is installed. Next, we're going to install the water inlet. So we're going to need a half inch uh, female to connect this to coming out of the wall or in the wall. And we want to make sure that we leave this foam on here because that's a grip for the cover that comes on in a minute. And then we just slide this cover on before we put any plumber's tape on. We're gonna put this plumber's tape on this thread and then we're gonna screw it into the wall. So now we're going to install the mounting brackets and this is what the toilet slides into. So we know where these need to go because we drilled the holes a moment earlier uh, using that template. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in place, make sure that the holes are lined up with the holes that we drilled. Do the same thing over here. And now we're just going to screw these into the floor. If you're dealing with tile, Toto does provide some, uh, some plastic sleeves, kind of Molly-like sleeves to help with that. Next, we're gonna to use Toto's second template 
to determine where the toilet bowl needs to go. So basically you can see this dotted line. It shows where the outer uh, edge of the toilet base lands. And by lining it up, it allows us to get really close to this rubber gasket where the porcelain pipe fits without having to worry about exactly where that, uh, that gasket is. You'll also notice that there's this plastic sleeve that fits right in here. This is designed to slide the bowl across so that we don't damage the floor or the bowl as we're installing it and getting it lined up perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in place and now we're gonna go ahead and tape this down so it doesn't slide as we're sliding the bowl. Now, once we install the bowl, the bowl is going to be sitting here. So we wanna make sure that wherever we're taping, we're not taping under where the bowl will sit simply because when we try to pull this out later, this, any tape in these areas here will prevent us from pulling that, uh, that template out. Now, Toto recommends when you're installing the NX1 or the NX2 to use two people to lift it and put it into place. I can attest to the fact that that is a great idea. Any of the other NeoRest that I've installed, I've installed as a one-man lift. Technically, Toto recommends two for those as well. But for the NX1 and the NX2, I definitely recommend two people. This is very hard to do all by yourself. So as you can see, getting it in position takes a little bit of work, but having this plastic here to slide it across helps. And if you look at the dotted line, you can see that this worked perfectly, showing us exactly where to place the toilet so that we didn't have to mess around with it. You can also tell that once it snapped into place, it was really easy to see that it snapped into place because now the toilet sits flush against the floor where previously the back was up because that porcelain, that porcelain pipe was resting on a part of the flange adapter instead of inside the rubber hole where it was supposed to fit. The next step we need to take is to take this mounting template off so that we can continue with the installation. Now, in order to slide this template out, I need to lift up on the front. I need to lift the lid and the seat but I lift them separately because otherwise they'll catch on one another. And now I can just grab the rim here, give it a slight lift and slide the template out. So now that we've got the toilet where we want it, we need to attach the toilet to the floor using those mounting brackets we installed uh, a little earlier in the video. You can see that the screws that are used for this have a huge hole in the middle. That is what allows these plastic covers to go and actually adhere to the screw. So what I like to do is I like to start the screw with an electric screwdriver, basically for time saving reasons. But then once the process is started, I finish it off with a manual screwdriver Whenever you're putting a screw through porcelain, you wanna be careful that you're not going to break anything. And so doing it with a manual screwdriver near the end there just gives you that finesse that keeps you from breaking anything. Now that we've got the screw in, we can put this little nub in. It does have an arrow to show you what side's up. If you look at this nub from the side, you can see that it's angled to match the contour of the bowl. So putting it in right side up allows you to make sure that it's got the sleekest look of it, uh, possible. Time to do the other side. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the lid and the seat down. And in the back, we're going to set up the manual flush. That is done by using this manual flush cable. And what we're going to do is we're going to feed this cable through 
the plastic pipe that we see here. And as we feed it through, it's going to work its way up into the main housing of the toilet. And it takes a little finesse to get it there. It's important to note that if you pull this cable up too much, it's going to make it tricky to do this next step. So if you do that, instead of trying to push the cable down from up above, reach back down here in the back and pull it down from the back here. And that's gonna be much simpler to do. Our next step is going to take this plate and install it like so. We feed the cable for the manual flush through one of those slots and then the pull string through the other slot. Once they're both in, we tighten it down with a manual screwdriver. Now that that's been tightened down, we take the ball at the top of that uh, manual flush and we feed it through this plastic pull string. There we go. So now it's fed through and if we pull up on this, We can hear that manual flush kicking in. And now we just feed that right back here. So now that we've got the manual flush installed, let's talk about this little black box. It's a battery pack. You basically stick two batteries into this box and you store it away somewhere. You're not going to see this battery pack shown in the installation manual because you don't actually utilize it or install it when you install your unit. If you lose power, make sure there are batteries in here. You take the plug and you plug it in back here. So without power to the unit, the flush still has power to work with because of this battery pack. Then all you have to do is pull up here. The flush kicks in. Once you're done with the flush, you unplug this and you put the cover back on the back. So we've done everything that we need to do, except for connect the water and the electricity. So we're gonna go ahead and take this uh, water hose. Now make sure that you have the blue gasket in that water hose before connecting it. And then simply connect it to your water inlet. Once you get it hand tight, tighten it down a little bit further with a wrench, but just ever so much to make it snug. Now it's time to check for leaks. So we've turned the water supply on for the house. Now we need to turn the water supply on here. And that's simply done with a flat tip screwdriver. Now this might look a little bit ugly and that's where the cover comes in. This cover grips this foam, allowing it to be held in place as simple as that. The last thing we need to do is connect this unit to electricity. So when I plug this unit in, I'm going to hear the nozzle come in and out as it starts to run through the self-cleaning process, starts to run water through the unit. So a few sounds are going to be uh, something that you should expect. That's the nozzle coming out. And as water works its way through the unit, you're going to start hearing pre-misting start as well. You can tell if the pre-misting has worked its way through the system because you see water start to mist around the bowl. And you might hear a few gurglings like we heard a moment ago as air works its way out of the system. Because remember, this is the first time we've put water through this particular unit. So now all we have left to do is install the remote. One thing to note is that when you're installing the remote holder on the wall, you also have this handy dandy cheat sheet. So make sure you don't throw this out. This frequently gets thrown out by mistake. You just line up the holes. And then when you install this on the wall, it's a guide. So the remote is sleek and classy, no words on the remote, but now you have a cheat sheet behind the remote telling you what needs to, what each of the buttons does. 
So don't throw that out. It goes on with the wall hanger and then the remote just sits on top. So now that we've got everything set up, let's take a couple of batteries. They do come with the remote and put them into the remote so that we can do a test. Testing it, make sure we have everything where it needs to be. So we've got the remote batteries in. Now, most of the total units use a pressure sensor on the back to, to indicate if someone's seated. This unit uses an infrared sensor to pick up on whether or not someone's seated. So I just need to activate that by using my hand or damp cloth. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little seat sensor indicator off. And I'm gonna put my hand on that. And now if I press a wash button, it should start. Let's see what we get. Missed it a little bit there. Now if I take my hand off the seat sensor, it picks up that no one is seated and it stops the wash. So here's where the seat sensor is located to let you know someone's seated. We now know that the functions work. For a full walkthrough, and here goes the flush. A frequent question we get is, how loud is the flush on one of these units? It's got a pump, so a lot of people think it's very loud because a, a public bathroom's flush is really loud. You can tell that was not very loud. So it is a pretty quiet flush, despite the fact that it's got a pump assisted flush. Now, if you want to know about all the features that the remote offers, check out our NeoRest remote playlist. A link is in the video description. Also keep in mind that if you have any questions about the installation of the Toto NeoRest NX line that we didn't address, you can always ask those questions in the YouTube comments, and that's gonna be the quickest way to get our answer ASAP. If you would prefer a more personal touch, you can always email, call, live chat, or text us. Feel free to reach out if you're looking for any special pricing on any of these units. We carry the entire Toto line and a variety of other brands. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day. Minibidays.com, where we sell mini bidets, not mini bidets.